In this video, I'm sharing three things I learned from John Maxwell's book, Becoming a Person of Influence. Now, this is an important book. John Maxwell defines leadership as influence. So this is kind of a playbook. It's the things that you have to do to increase your leadership, or in other words, to increase your leadership capacity. The first thing I learned from this book was that a person of influence has integrity with others. Now, this is a character trait, and this is something that everyone always says, like, yeah, 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 integrity, honesty, and all those things. And if you were to ask anybody, whether they're unethical and or they're a liar or any of those types of things, everyone would say no. No one thinks that they're unethical or they don't act with integrity. We all think that we have integrity and honesty, and yet we find so many times, especially in leadership capacities, people acting without integrity. And so he says integrity is something that happens in the small moments. It's a habit that's, honesty is a habit. Integrity is a habit. And it's built up in those small, innocuous moments. See, when you take a major scandal like Enron or some other company that had a very you know, negative public falling out or whatever the case may be. It, it's very unlikely that someone woke up one morning and said, you know what, let me come up with a plan to defraud people out of millions and millions of dollars. Rather, it's something that was probably traded up the chain. You started with something small and then you pushed the limits and you pushed the limits and you pushed the limits. And the thing is, is that when we make those negotiations, we always tell ourselves like, okay, I'll stop here. I'm going to draw the line here and it'll be easier to say no later. Like I'll let myself have this one little thing, and then I'll say no. But the problem is that as far as our character goes, once we've made that negotiation and compromise, it actually becomes easier to compromise again, not, not more difficult. And so making those bigger mistakes, we build propensity toward that. So integrity is something, and it's also it's self-reflective. It's something that we make a decision to act with honesty or to not do that. And it's kind of regardless of environment or circumstance or situation, it's a personal choice that everyone has to make. One way to assess integrity is to ask yourself, you know, do I talk to people or about people? How do I act when I'm alone versus when I'm in the spotlight? How do I treat people who really might not have anything to offer me? You know, there's always that example of going, taking someone to a job interview and having the waiter or waitress mess up their order on purpose to see how they react. Now that's, you know, everyone kind of gets that, but there's a principle there that's very true. And that is how do you treat people that, again, they might not have any immediate benefit to you or value to you, at, you know, in a given moment of time. The more that you make integrity a fundamental principle by which you operate, the more, to, the more that it helps you navigate different situations. So it actually helps you with situations like knowing, for example, when someone's criticizing you, when to take the high road and when to see it as constructive feedback. That's something that we struggle with. But when you act with integrity, you're trying to be honest with yourself as well. Another thing about integrity, and this is something that's really interesting, Jay Abraham has something that he calls a strategy of preeminence. And this is something that's made him and his clients millions upon millions of dollars. But the, the basic gist of it is this, is that do you have trusted advisor status with your clients? I.e., do you act with your clients out of their best interest instead of your best interest? So a client might come to you and ask you for something that you, you might have the capacity to do it, but you realize that maybe one of your competitors is a little bit better. Do you have the honesty to tell them, you know what, I would love to do it, but actually one of my competitors does that better than I do. And that's blasphemy in business circles. That's very counterintuitive. But the reality is, is that you gain a level of trust. The highest relationship status you can have with someone is trust. And when you have that trust, you might lose that small piece of business in the interim, but in the long run, you set yourself up for a lot of wins. And that's kind of the gist of integrity is that we make those slips based on short-term thinking. Analytically, we all know that long-term thinking is better, it's more productive, it's more beneficial, it's more useful, but it's harder to act with. And the more that we orient ourselves around the fundamental principle of integrity and honesty, the easier it becomes to think with that long-term thinking in mind. The second lesson I learned was that a person of influence empowers other people. Now, empowering other people means sharing your influence, your power, your resources with someone with the intent of helping them to also maximize their potential. See, kind of the conundrum of influence is that a lot of times when people become more powerful, more influential, they tend to also get more territorial. They want to hold on to what power they have, and they're reluctant to share it with other people. But a person of influence, and this goes along with integrity, is when they see someone that they can empower, they rush to do it. They're motivated to help that other person also maximize their potential. And empowering someone, it can be as simple as letting your child cross the street by themselves. It can also be giving an employee charge and authority over a major project and the resources to execute it the way in which they want. And the thing is, when we 
become generous with our influence and we empower other people and we help other people grow, that actually increases our level of respect as well. So the more influence that you give away and you help to empower others, the more that it helps you grow as well and actually increase your influence and leadership capacity. The third thing that I learned was that a person of influence understands people. People often make the mistake of saying that as long as I have the right technical skills, the way that my people skills are shouldn't matter because I get the job done. But the reality is that a lot of times in the workplace, you'll find that there's people whose technical skills kind of level off, but it's the people skills that keep them around. And so people are looking to see, do you actually care about me? Do you care about my point of view? And the more that you're willing to try to understand people, and it's that basic thing of empathy. Can I put myself in so myself into someone else's shoes and see things the way that they see them? If I can do that, I can communicate with them better. I can understand them better. I can relate to them better. And at a basic level, it just shows that I care about them. When I take the time to try to understand someone's situation, I better relate and I better connect. Now, what that does is when I show that initiative, that person will also try to then see things from my point of view. Now, in the business world, that has huge ramifications. When we talk about things like getting buy-in on projects, what makes someone really successful at seeking buy-in is that they're able to understand what someone else wants. It's my ability to say, okay, if I was in their situation, what would I want? What would my motivations be? And when I can connect with them at that level, it's far easier to get them to buy into a certain project or to buy into a certain initiative, which basically is the essence of increasing your influence. One of the things that we notice in the workplace is when there's a bad culture, people tend not to do this. And so we see communication breakdowns. We don't often see conflicts because of outright disagreements. It's usually because of an, a lack of understanding of where someone else is coming from. So someone suggests something and because we haven't understood where they're coming from, fear and paranoia take over. And so we'll say things like, oh, you're only suggesting this because of X, Y, Z reasons. And we project a very bad intention onto whatever they're saying. And that causes that person then to become defensive. And then that causes a breakdown. And when that breakdown happens, we see it. It's politics, it's tension, it's awkwardness, it's a lack of communication, it's uneasiness, uncomfortableness. It's all of those kind of intangible things. They're a result of people just not trying to understand where the other one is coming from. It's basically a culture where I'm afraid to speak up. I'm afraid to share ideas. I think that if I give my manager an idea that I'm going to suddenly, I, I won't get credit for it or my manager will steal it, or if I have something really good, I might outshine my manager, therefore I need to keep quiet. All of these things, they kind of, they're rooted, they're rooted in a scarcity mindset, but they show that there's just a lack of people understanding one another. And if I want to reach that high level of leadership, that high level of leadership capacity, then if I'm in that position, I have to work to create the right culture in the organization where people are operating from an element of understanding one another. One of the easiest ways to do that is just simply find ways to respect people and show them that you value them. You know, when someone works really, really hard on something, they put a lot of effort into something. It's one thing to say like, oh, hey, that looks great. That's awesome. That was mind blowing. That was amazing. That compliment has a certain level. But when you stop and you tell someone, hey, I can really tell that you put a lot of work and effort into this one thing. Regardless of talking about even the outcome of that, when usually just praising someone's effort and kind of that game recognized game, like I can recognize that you put a lot of effort into something, that alone make, often makes a person feel respected and feel valued and they'll then respond to you in the same way. These are three ways that a person can increase their level of influence from John Maxwell's book, Becoming a Person of Influence. There's a link to the book in the description down below. Please make sure you hit the thumbs up and the subscribe button. See you next week.